Bob, thanks for joining us. Talking about anxiety today, it's something everyone deals with, I assume. The calmest person we know, might there be people out there that don't deal with anxiety, or is it pretty much a common thread that's found in almost everyone? So almost anyone might be expected to experience anxiety. Anxiety is a perfectly normal part of life. It's the way our bodies react to stress and stressful situations. Uh, there is a difference between normal anxiety and what we would call an anxiety disorder. Uh, those normal feelings of anxiety or feelings that we might have around, say, you're a student and you're, uh, you have some anxiety about taking a test, or you're an employee and you know that your annual review is coming up and you have some anxiety about that. Sometimes people have anxiety about public presentations, even sitting and talking with reporters mm -hmm. they have anxiety about. That anxiety in those forms might in fact be motivational and good to make you prepare, make you focus. So some anxiety, I assume you would agree, is good. Certainly, they can uh, sort of hone your focus into the yeah. task at hand and make you uh, sort of block out some of the extraneous details. At, at what point in your thought does it begin to change from maybe a positive, it's okay to be anxiety about that test, go study hard, prepare, to negative behavior or negative effect on a person? So what we think about are uh, things like the pervasiveness of the symptoms. If you're experiencing some sort of anxiety, symptoms of anxiety for six months or longer, we might really begin to look at an anxiety diagnosis. If the feelings of anxiety cause you to avoid situations to a degree that would be abnormal, for example, you drive 20 miles out of your way to work every day because you don't want to go over a bridge, that might rise to the level of an anxiety diagnosis. Something as simple as, I don't want to go to that function. I'd love to hear that speaker, but I can't stand I have anxiety about being in a room full of people for a variety of reasons. That's negative and is something someone should deal with because you don't want to become a recluse. Certainly. That would be, that might tend to, toward a diagnosis of social anxiety disorder. When somebody comes to you and says, I, I need some counseling, I need some help, what are some ways that you try to help people deal with anxiety, maybe manage it? I'm assuming telling them to get over it is not a, an approach you would take. So what, what do you do? Well, there are a number of uh, approaches to treating anxiety disorders. Anxiety is very manageable condition in most people. Um, it can be treated the, with best results with a combination of things. Typically, we might talk about a talk therapy, mm -hmm. potentially medication, uh, things like meditation, yoga, acupuncture. In extreme cases, you might think about a residential treatment, but those cases are certainly uh, fewer. If someone has anxiety issues that are beyond normal and don't seek treatment, tell me some of the problems that can cause real physical problems. What are the risks of not dealing with anxiety as soon as you can? Well, um, one of the symptoms of anxiety can certainly be sleep disruption. So if you're not getting enough sleep, that can begin to have effects on your memory, uh, certainly pervasive effects on your mood and your ability to function in your normal environment at work, at school, whatever, even in your family situations. Um, there can also be problems with ability to digest food. That, that can lead to all kinds of uh, health, other health-related issues. Can the stress from anxiety lead to heart problems? Certainly can. Certainly can lead to heart problems. Um, it, sometimes people think that it might uh, tend towards post-traumatic stress disorder. So it's important to note that post-traumatic stress disorder can have symptoms like an anxiety disorder, but it's actually a different diagnosis and is treated a little bit differently. Um, but yes, many of the uh, symptoms of uh, anxiety can cause significant health issues. I found it encouraging, and the people watching this interview may find it encouraging that a moment ago you said most anxiety disorders are fairly, I think you said, easily manageable. Mm -hmm. That's an optimistic view. I was afraid you might say, well, it's really hard, we can't tackle it, but there are things to do. So you can kind of reassure people who know they're dealing with anxiety that if they seek the proper help and follow instructions from someone like you that's trained, they can decrease the amount of anxiety they deal with. Certainly, um, anxiety disorders are the most common mental health diagnoses in the United States affecting about uh, just short of 20% of the population, about 40 million people. Mm. Only about a third of those actually seek treatment. Uh, it's something that is manageable, so if anyone is experiencing symptoms like that, that they believe are intruding upon their ability to have what they would consider a normal life, first step is to talk 
to whoever their physician is and see what the management might be for that. Is it a, a big challenge often to find out the, the real cause of the anxiety or sometimes patients not aware of or willing to admit what their anxiety is about really? So you really hit on two key points. Um, they may not be aware of what the actual source of the anxiety is and they may not be willing to talk about it. So. It's, that's the reason talk therapies can be very important in treating people with anxiety disorders. So what is your best advice today? People are watching this that are saying, I'm going, I know I deal with anxiety. I don't feel good because of it. I'm so tired of thinking about this. Do you go to your general practitioner first and say, I need your guidance on finding someone to talk to? What's, what's the bottom line advice you would give to our viewers? So I'd say one of two things. Uh, start with your general practitioner. If you're not comfortable with doing that, if you are fortunate enough to have an employer that has an EAP, reach out to your employee assistance program and talk with a mental health provider there. And they should then connect you with someone like you or someone that can help them. That's correct. Very good. I hope we can help relieve stress and anxiety in people with uh, this segment today and we very much appreciate your expertise and thank you for your time. Thank you very much.